Hey babies, welcome back to another Oops All Spells video. It's spooky season, and this is pretty much the only competitive deck that I know of playing Jack-O-Lantern, so it fits pretty well. We also have some vampires, some horrible nightmare creatures, so it fits the season pretty well. Let's get into the games. All right, round one with Oops All Spells. We won the die roll. We have almost the hand we want, but we would like to have at least one more of our MDFCs, so let's mulligan here. Mm, no lands, let's mulligan. No lands in the, uh... More operational than technical sense, I suppose, since we don't have any lands in the deck. Other than MDFCs. Alright, let's mulligan to five. Let's see. Good lord, this is not... Very clean for us now, is it? Let's mulligan again. Ugh. This is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Let's see. One, two, three, four. Let's keep four lands. Technically, we could draw a mana rock and then a win condition and still win on turn three with this hand. I think it's a little bit too unlikely that I find what I need on three since I need at least four cards to be able to win the game in general. If you have two lands, a Pinthead Prism, and one of the two win conditions that just win you the game on the spot. When it leads on Birds of Paradise, it looks like we're playing against Yogmoth. Let's play a tap land and pass. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have us dead too quickly since they also mulliganed a bit. They mulligan to five. Play Strangle Root Geist, okie dokie. We really just need to draw either an Undercity Informer or a... Uh, Balustrade Spy to be able to win on turn four, though, most likely. There's the Undercity Informer. Let's play Tap to Miria's Call. And we just gotta hope that they don't have the kill on us here. They already have two Undying creatures, so they could just go Yogmoth and then at least be able to draw some cards. They wouldn't necessarily have us dead unless they draw the right cards. Eldritch Evolution. Okay, so they do have the Yogmoth. They have Wooded Foothills for some extra mana up. If they are able to somehow or another cord into having us dead, then that's an issue. They didn't go straight for the kill, though. So we're going to be able to do a decent chunk of damage to them and then threaten them with a kill next turn, most likely with Thassa's Oracle. As long as they don't have an Endurance. Sacrifice Undercity Informer targeting ourselves. So we're going to drain them for 12, which is great because that sets back the amount of draws that they can get with Yogmoth significantly. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Two, three, Sword of the Meeks. Let's get back Salvage Titan. Exile, Exile, Exile. It doesn't really matter, but I generally like to keep Inside Prisms in the graveyard just in case I need to Memories Journey them for fixing later. Get back some Venge Vines. And since I'm going to have Narcomoeba and Salvage Titan back anyway, I think I'm just going to go ahead and attack in with the Venge Vines and force them to take a little bit extra damage now or at least activate Yogmoth at a time that they don't necessarily want to yet because that stops us from dying to a Drowth's Messenger and them having enough life to just recur it a handful of times to kill us kind of gets Dryad Arbor they're going to block everything? okay so I assume they're going to shrink this one so the Yogmoth stays alive at least and then we'll see what happens other than that yep And we have a stop on our upkeep as long as they don't assemble the rest of the combo on their turn, which is pretty much just any way to get Blood Artists. They have a decent amount of draws if they want to use Yogmoth to search for them. They definitely have the mana now. They play Birds of Paradise. They have two cards left. They have a Nurturing Peatland they could sack for a draw as well. 
Time plays Eldritch Evolution. Looks like that's the Blood Artist. Okie dokie. Unfortunate. So they're going to have Endurances and Thoughtseize effects as their interaction with us. So we're going to bring in a set of Leyline of Sanctity. And we might bring in Goblin Charbelcher. We'll see. I want to keep all the Hagger Maulings in this matchup. We can safely cut one Jack-O-Lantern as usual. One Shatter Skull Smashing. One Creeping Chill. And... Do I just want to take out a second Shatter Skull? I think that might be right. I want to leave Thassa's Oracle in case I have to win with that because the board gets too gummed up. Let's do it like that. Yes, we'll take the play. This hand has two ways to win the game, has some ramp, let's keep it. We can win through an Endurance with Belcher, and we can threaten them with a turn three win. The way that our hand's set up currently, plus we have an extra aggro laying around in case we need to remove something. So other than not having Ley, uh, Ley Line of Sanctity, this hand is pretty ideal for us in this matchup, I think. Opponent leads on Birds of Paradise and passes. We draw a Vengevine. Doesn't really matter. You're going to have some dead draws playing this deck regardless. Which is part of why it's kind of weird how you assess uh, hands with Oops All spells. You can take a lot of what feel like free mulligans just because you're going to have two to three cards in pretty much every hand of seven that you draw that just doesn't do anything. Opponent Necromenches us. Okay. If they have Vengevine, we get a zombie. They're probably not going to hit Belcher. They hit Narcomiva. Okay. I'm fine with that. Let's just put a Belcher into play. Four. And pass. And we can force them to remove that. Hooray! Alright, so they saw our Ley Lines, which is a little unfortunate. But Necromentia is another thing that Ley Line of Sanctity turns off, so I'm going to... Keep being satisfied with that, I think. I don't think there's anything else I really want to change, so let's just run it back. We have only one land, unfortunately, otherwise this hand would be pretty good, so let's mulligan. Hmm. We don't have Pinted Prism on two with this hand, which could be an issue. Also, we saw them Necromentia, our graveyard combo pieces, so let's mulligan again, hopefully get a ley line. Okay, we found a ley line. We have two lands. Talisman, Undercity, Informer. We can ditch these two. This hand seems pretty good. So this turns off Thoughtseize effects, Necromentia, and Endurance. And it also means that we can't be targeted by their Blood Artist until they remove it. And they lead on Young Wolf instead of a Mana Dork, so that's great news. We drew another, we drew another land, so now we have enough mana to where if they don't interact with us at all, we can win on turn three. Play Hagger Mauling, pass the turn. All right, hopefully we can just coast from here. They have Outland Liberator, that's a little annoying. We draw. Pentad Prism. Let's play Seagate Restoration. Play Pentad Prism. I think Pentad Prism is strong enough that they might be tempted to use their Outland Liberator to blow that up instead of the Ley Line. I'd rather the Ley Line stick around so that I know that uh, Endurance isn't hitting us. But we're most likely just going to have to go for it next turn anyway if they leave us with the mana. Opponent has four cards in hand, three mana. If they Outland Liberator, they're only going to have two mana to work with. They still just probably have an Endurance and a green card if they have Endurance in their hand at all. Opponent hits us for two with Liberator. Looks like they might just not play anything and flip the Liberator here. Which I am okay with. They blow up Leyline of Sanctity. Okay. Maybe this is the... Okay, they're thought seizing away our Undercity Informer. A little annoying. But we could just draw another win condition pretty easily. Academe's Awakening. That gives us a line. Let's play Talisman of Hierarchy. Play Emeria's Call tapped. And I think I'm just going to keep this Agadim's in my hand to where I can reanimate Undercity Informer later. 
I can cast it for three now and get it back, but I need one more mana to be able to activate it. It's not going to be able to get back my Venge Vines, but it can at least set up the graveyard combo with Thassa's Oracle pretty well. And if I wait until I draw another creature, then I can activate. Then I can trigger the Venge Vines, rather. Done it. Eldritch Evolutions, getting... Wall of Roots, okay. Not what I would have expected, but all right. Belcher. Okay. Well, we, we just have seven mana. So, uh, got him. <laughs> ah, ha, ha. The old turn four Belcher win. Didn't see that coming, did you? All right, well, our opponent decided to be a bit of a douche since our deck is spookier than theirs and timed us out. But anyway, on to the next game. All right, round two with Oops. We lost the die roll and we don't have any lands in our opener. So let's mulligan. Let's see. We have Balustrade Spy, one piece of ramp, two lands. We need one more land or a Pentad Prism. But the sand is strong enough that I think I keep it. Let's get rid of Sword of the Meek. And let's see what our opponent's on. Opponent plays Wooded Foothills. And passes, we draw a land, sweet. Hmm. Wooded Foothills go is pretty inconclusive. Let's just go Ag Agadim's Awakening, tapped, go. Instead of playing Jack-O-Lantern this turn. Hopefully they are not playing a deck with Beseju, or at least they won't hit one of our lands with it before we get to uh, start playing our Mana Rocks. So Tora's Proving Ground. Okay. Opponent gets a Scalding Tarn and passes again. Weird. I would have thought that they are a either Jund or some type of Domain Zoo deck, but since they haven't actually made a play turn one or two, it kind of makes me think that they're like Calibrated Blast or something. Either that or they just kept a terrible hand. Since they're not interacting or pressuring us in any way. We draw an Amiibo, we're not too happy about that. Let's play turn Timber, play Sphere of Suns. Passing the turn after that. Hopefully our opponent continues to just not do anything for a little bit and just lets us kill them. Opponent cracks Scalding Tarn down to 18. Gets Ketria Trium. Okie dokie. Maybe they're a Footfalls deck. One of the five color ones that plays domain cards. We draw Seagate Restoration. I mean, I'm just going to go for it. What you got, opponent? Be funny if they are a calibrated blast deck because I am within range now of getting blasted. All right, it resolved. We're gonna target ourselves. They could still have like an endurance or something, maybe. I guess we'll have to see. These creeping chills start resolving. It means that we are home free, though. Big graveyard. What you got, opponent? You gotta do something now. Looks like they don't have anything. They might have, like, some removal that they're gonna try to fight through the Venge Vines with, but that's not gonna work very well for them. Okay. Yes. Uh... Salvage Titan... You, you, you. Activate Phantasmagorian. You, you, you. Salvage Titan again. You, you. And you. Narcomoeba comes back. Three Sword of the Meeks come back. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. Cast Salvage Titan, sacrificing three Sword of the Meeks, trigger all our Venge Vines. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. Okay. 
I guess opponent just wanted to see the combo. We don't really know what they're playing, which is unfortunate. I think there's a decent chance that Silence is good, and I think there's a decent chance that bringing in just another Belcher is good. It's possible that we're going to want Ley Lines. I don't really think that we're going to wind up wanting Prismatic Endings, but we'll see. I feel like they're most likely a Cascade deck of some sort. So that's why the silences are coming in. They definitely showed us blue, so being able to stop either a counterspell or an endurance from coming down is really useful. And then just having an extra belcher is an extra win condition that gets through graveyard stuff that they're probably bringing in. Let's cut the usual suspects, a creeping chill, a jack-o'-lantern, and a shatter skull smashing, since red is the least useful color. And looks like we're going to be mulliganing this hand. Opponent mulligans to six, we will mulligan as well. Uh, we have two lands, two Undercity Informers, a Vengevine, and a Thassa's Oracle. I think I keep the Thassa's Oracle in hand, in case they play like Rest in Peace. Let's keep, get rid of Vengevine. We need to draw another mana source, but double Undercity Informer means that we can... Get through a counter spell. They did have Leyline of the Void. So we're not going to win the conventional way this game at the very least. But it's nice that we have Thassa's Oracle already. We draw Seagate Restoration. I'd rather lead it on Emiria's Call because I'd rather keep the Seagate Restoration in case they besage you our land here, which is definitely possible. Tetria Triumph. Okie dokie. What are they playing? Leyland of the Void means I can pretty much write off them possibly being a calibrated blast deck, but they could still easily be either Zoo or Footfalls. What are they going to play here? Looks like Ice. Yeah, they play Ice. Okay, it looks like it's Footfalls. Pretty cleanly now. Mm. We draw Sword of the Meek. Let's play Seagate Restoration. Tapped. Pass the turn. We gotta wait another turn for Talisman of Hierarchy because of the ice. And we need to find one more blue source so we can cast Thassa's Oracle through Undercity Informer. Looks like they're holding up Violent Outburst this turn. So we're gonna be on a clock. Hagra Mauling. Let's play Talisman. I'm just going to play Hagra Mauling tapped here. I'm going to play Spell Pierce. Interesting, so it's not a Footfalls deck. Well, I guess I don't have to worry about Surprise 4-4s, four but now I'm just kind of confused as to what our opponent's playing. What could Spell Pierce, Leyline of the Void, Fire Ice, and Five Color Lands mean? Maybe like a... It could still tech... Oh, it's a Creativity deck, okay. I completely didn't think that it would be creativity here. That's fine. Uh, let's ditch Sword of the Meek. We need to draw Belcher this turn, basically, I think is the only way that we win here. Because now we can't actually uh, just Undercity Informer and pass. We draw Miria's Call. Let's play Shatter Skull Smashing Tapped. Pass the turn. So what ways do we have to win here? They're going to get in with Archon. We're going to discard Undercity Informer because it's extra. We need six mana total, including two blue, to be able to Undercity Informer and Thassa's Oracle during the same turn, which I think is what we have to try to set up. So we have to draw something that we're okay with pitching here, and then... Or we could draw Pentad Prism, play that, and not play our land, so we discard that to the Archon and pass. Looks like they're going to have another Archon, though. Actually, if we even just pass the turn, we're dead. Because of the amount of damage that Archon has already done to us. The creativity, let's just concede. Hmm. So I don't need Silence. 
do I want prismatic ending? Or ley line of sanctity? Because ley line stops Archon from targeting us, which is really nice. And prismatic ending X4 is basically impossible to play anyway. I think they probably have some amount of like Thoughtseize effects. Hmm. Cut a Balustrade Spy for a Ley Line of Sanctity since they're probably going to mulligan again for Ley Line. And let's cut a Creeping Chill for the last one. Actually, no. Well, I could cut a land instead. But they probably have Ren 6 loop that they could possibly get us with. I think I need the Creeping Chill. Let's get rid of a Shatter Skull Smashing. Keeping all the Hagra Maulings because hitting their creature with it is kind of nice. Alright, this hand would be great if we had any land. We got a Mulligan. Again, don't have quite enough lands here. Let's mulligan. All right. We're going to keep five. We're going to get rid of Vengevine. We're going to get rid of Emiria's Call. Let's see if they have Leyline uh, in their opening hand. They mulligan to five. So they might at least have a bit of an awkward hand afterward if they do have Leyline. They mulligan to four. They're going deep for Leyline, okay. Hopefully they don't get it. <laughs> we can cross our fingers, I guess. They mulligan to three, what the hell? Okay, an opponent just concedes. All right. Uh, easy enough, we didn't, even have to, we didn't even have to play Count Chocula that game. I'll see you in the next one. Round three with Oops, our opponent's on the play and we are mulliganing. Our opponent kept seven, let's see. Mulliganing again, down to five. We have Spy, two lands, no ramp. Let's mulligan down to four. All right. Hagra, Turn Timber, Undercity Informer, and I suppose just another Undercity Informer. I think we're a little bit too far away from Belcher being realistic. Let's get rid of these three. Best possible draw for us is Pinted Prism. Because that fixes our mana for a turn three win all by itself. Opponent Thought seizes us. Since we have double Undercity Informer, I think they're probably going to take Hagra Mauling. Yep, they take Hagra Mauling. All right. So we want to draw... Okay, we don't want to draw Phantasmagorian. All right, we just need mana at this point. And they're playing Rakdos, so there's a decent chance they're going to have Dothy Voidwalker or some other way to shut us off in game one, unfortunately. We mulliganed a bit more than we usually do just because we didn't have the right type of hands that we usually look for. Opponent plays Bloodstained Mire, cracks it for a Swamp, and passes. Okay. We draw a Salvage Titan, not exciting, pass the turn. <sighs> and now we're going to be waiting for a little while. If they play Blood Moon, we can still win by playing a Mana Rock that'll fix our mana for black. Lightning Skelemental. That's actually sort of nice for us, because getting rid of Phantasmagorian is great. Let's get rid of Salvage Titan Phantasmagorian. We still have double Undercity Informer in our hand. We draw... They sacrifice their Blight, their uh, Lightning Skelemental, and we draw what? Balustrade Spy. Alright, we have entirely too many of these cards. Once we get to four mana, we will very much have a lot of ways to possibly win the game at least. Wonder what our opponent's gonna take here. I bet it's an Undercity Informer. And we just gotta draw either land Pintad Prism or three lands in a row, including a Black Source. We found a Pintad Prism. If they don't Thought sees us here and we draw a land that we can play it with, we're actually in a decent spot suddenly. Because I don't think people really play Coligan's Command main deck anymore. 
At least not very often. There's Dothy Voidwalker. Now we're extra sad. <sighs> okay. <laughs> and we know there's a Belcher on the bottom of our deck. I'm just going to keep waiting until we're actually dead. Just because I know uh, bullshit happens when you're playing a combo deck. But I don't think we can realistically, realistically win from here. We would need at least three turns, from what I can see, if we got perfect draws. Uh, let's just concede so they don't get any more information here. In case they hit something that we haven't shown them yet. And let's see. Let's bring in Belcher. I think they're going to have enough graveyard hate that we can't do much about it. We're going to keep in all of the Hagra Maulings because they're a way that we can deal with Dothy Voidwalker, but let's bring in Leyline of Sanctities. Cutting a Jack-O-Lantern, a Creeping Chill, Shatter Skull Smashing, one Spy, and I think one more Smashing, probably. Other option is... Cutting Thassa's Oracle, which I don't think is right, because Thassa's Oracle plus one of our Informer or Spies is a way to win through Dothy Voidwalker. Cutting Creeping Chill is also kind of an option, but if we just win the old-fashioned way, I don't really want to only be draining them for six. If I can help it. So yeah, let's just cut another Smashing. We saw Seasoned Pyromancer, so we know that even if we go for the regular win condition, we might run into some issues with them having a lot of chump blockers or removal. So I think we still need the Creeping Chills for softening up their life total. And hopefully this will be enough. Uh, against Rakdos decks, usually bringing in Leyline of Sanctity is a pretty good decision in general because a lot of them play the Grief-Undying combo, and it stops them from using a lot of cards that are in their hand. Rakdos is also the deck that stopped my winning streak with Dredge last time, too, so I'm not super excited about seeing them just because they have so much graveyard interaction. All right, we'll take the play. We have Spy and Informer and plenty of lands. I think I just keep this because it's kind of just fine. They didn't start with Leyline of the Void. That's fantastic. Let's go turn Timber Pass. See if they thought sees us or what they do on their turn. Hopefully we can fade them having Voidwalker. I got excited for a second when they let on Mountain, but since they played Ragavan, they could still play Voidwalker next turn, technically. We draw Narc Amoeba. That's kind of interesting. Is there a world where I just run out Narc Amoeba to try to block Ragavan? I don't think so. I think I just need to play Talisman and try to go for the win. I might be able to set up a win in a weird way with Undercity Informer if their graveyard hate is like a Soul Guide Lantern or something instead of Dothy Voidwalker. Because I could possibly do stuff with the activation on the stack. Opponent Exiles of Vengevine, they get a treasure. And let's see what they do. If they don't interact at all, that's great. If they go for just a thought season and don't have anything else, that's great too, because we have two ways to win. They would have to thought seize our land. Okay, they go for Torok and pass. Okay. Uh, unless they have random surgical extraction here, we should just win. Play Spy. Turn our hands inward with Spy. Look at how cool my deck is, opponent. It's so Halloween-y. Three Creeping Chills and an Archimeba hit the stack. Are they going to interact? They could Surgical. Opponent does have a Surgical Extraction. They target... It looks like Narcomoeba with it. Is it Narcomoeba? Yeah, they target Narcomoeba with it. Okay. That successfully stops me from killing them with Vengevine here. But... I still have the ability to just win the game with Oracle next turn. And they might still just be stuck on one land. So we need to avoid them either having a second surgical or going like 
just Soul Guide Lantern crack it immediately. RIP Narc Amoeba. Pass the turn. All right, no interaction, please. We have a blocker, so we can stop the Ragavan trigger from happening and giving them a treasure. Opponent plays another Surgical on Memory's Journey, and we concede. Very sad. All right, the double Surgical, I guess, is why they kept that. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. All right, round four with Oops, we won the die roll. We have not quite a turn three win, so let's mull again. All right, we have... Talisman, Emiria's Call, Turn Timber, Undercity, Undercity, Vengevine, Narcamoeba. We just need to draw a land, and we'll have a turn three win. And we know that there's an Narcamoeba on the bottom of our deck, so that's really nice. Get rid of you. Okay. Let's lead on Turn Timber, since it can be the most possible things. Where Emiria's Call, some, like... I've seen... Some white decks play Amiria's Call, but not nearly as often as you see, like, either the Belcher deck or Amulet decks or something else play Turn Timber. I think Allosaurus Rider also plays this. Opponent plays Ragavan. It looks like we're playing against a Rakdos midrange deck again, and they grief us. Probably taking Amiria's Call, I would guess. I don't think they would take an Undercity Informer, most likely at least. They could also take Talisman of Hierarchy to cut us off a of black, maybe. They take Talisman. All right, so we want to draw a Pinted Prism, mostly. What do they exile? They exile to Terminate. There's a Pinted Prism. All right, so they're going to get to Ragavan us. We need to fade them getting Salvage Titan with Ragavan, and we need to not get double Thought Seized, are the two things. All right, what did they hit with Ragavan? Belcher, don't care. Do you have double thought seas? Do you have a way to blow up Pinted Prism? Opponent plays Polluted Delta, fetches down to 16, plays Dothy Voidwalker, fuck. All right. <sighs> My life sucks. Do I just play Undercity Informer? It makes them use a removal spell on it or not hit me with Ragavan at least. Let's run it out. They could pretty easily just like Fatal Push or Bolt it, but I guess that's fine. Main deck Dothy Voidwalkers, man. My greedy graveyard decks can't beat that. At least not very easily. Opponent Thought seizes us. Okie dokie. So they could just spy us off of Dothy Voidwalker and then we die. Let's see if they see that line. Otherwise, we still technically have some outs. They take Undercity Informer. They could still use that with Voidwalker, I guess. They terminate. All right. Oh, wait, no, we wouldn't die because Voidwalker would be gone. I'm a dumbass. We take five. Ragavan hits us. Shows a Vengevine. Opponent plays a land. They have one card in hand. We draw a spy. Uh, let's concede. Hmm. So they are playing Grief, which means we're definitely going to want to do Leyline of Sanctities. And because of the main deck, Graveyard Hate, we want Goblin Charbelcher. Let's side the same way that we did last time. Hopefully we can get a dub here. We got a 5-0 last time I was playing Oops All Spells, and we certainly got lucky with some of that, but we also didn't run into a lot of these same matchups. Oops All Spells, I'd say the types of deck that you mostly want to run into are opposing combo and aggro decks, because we're a little bit faster on average than Amulet, at least after sideboard, because we have relevant sideboard for them. And they don't have super good sideboard for us. And plus we can just consistently win on turn three without them being able to interact in a way that actually works very well. So I've had a really good run against Amulet with this deck. Of course Tron's very easy unless they like KGC and you can't use your Pentad Prisms anymore. And Burn is also very easy with Oops All Spells.
But I'd say like Rakdos mid range with main deck Dothy Voidwalker and Murktide decks that can just sort of tempo you out by applying pressure while also countering your spells one turn after the other are the decks that you don't want to see the most. All right, we'll take the play. We have Leyline of Sanctity and we have Belcher, so we're not going for a uh, graveyard win here. And we have Thassa's Oracle. I'm going to keep this. I'd like to draw a Mana Rock so we can try to go for the Belcher win on turn four. But overall, I think this is fine either way. Let's put Leyline into play. Hopefully they have lots of Thought Seizes in their hand. Uh, and let's play Seagate Restoration tapped. So we can possibly play Narcomoeba next turn if they play Ragavan. Because I will just run out Narcomoeba as a blocker. Should I need to. Opponent plays Bloodstained Mire. Gets a Blood Crypt. And... Evokes Grief. Looks like they're basically hitting the concession mode now. Since they evoked a Grief just to have... A 3-2. We don't need to run out Narcomoeba, I guess. We draw Undercity Informer. I might just run out Narcomoeba anyway. So they don't dash Ragavan. Let's play Emiria. Run out Narcomoeba as Ragavan Assurance. Insurance, whatever you want to call it. And we still need to draw a little bit more mana. Like one more land specifically. Or just a dork would also be fine. Mana rock, I mean. I guess they're not dorks. We draw Hagramalling. That is a land. So we will play it tapped and pass. I'm not going to go all the way with this Narcomy, but I've accepted that. And we can go Belcher go. And then we can also try to win with Undercity Informer the next turn if they blow up Belcher and haven't played appropriate graveyard hate yet. I don't want to die to Surgical like I did last time. That'd be pretty sad. Opponent taps a black, taps a red, taps a red. Plays Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay. We draw Sphere of Suns. I could go for the Undercity Informer win here, but I want to play around Surgical so I don't die to that twice in a row. And I don't think they have a way to deal 8 damage to me through a blocker and a ley line. So I think I might as well wait and make them dedicate some resources to dealing with Belcher first. There is a decent chance they can blow up the Belcher. They are playing a red deck. And we did have Artifact's main deck that they saw, I think. Did we actually cast the Pintad Prism? Yeah, we, we cast the Pintad Prism last game, so they did see it. All these Rakdos uh, games are running together for me a little bit. Opponent's going to decide what they want to loot away with Fable the Mirror Breaker, or Rummage away, I guess, since it's discard two and then draw two. They discard Necromentia Terminate. Okay, that's good information for us that they have Necromentia. And I think I'm going to plan on chump blocking the Goblin Shaman here, just so they can't possibly like blow up Leyline and then just bolt me, because that would be sad. Block the Shaman. Take three down to five. And... If I play Season Pyromancer, they're going to rummage a little bit more. Looking for artifact destruction, no doubt. Did they find it? They did not. Kapow. All right. Well, we got one against Rakdos, so that's a nice start. I think I'm just going to run it back the same way. Leyline definitely did a lot of work for us there, and Belcher didn't necessarily have to be our win condition that game, I don't think, but it's nice to have since we saw main deck Dothy, and I'm sure they have more graveyard hate after the sideboard too. Part of what I think is so hard for this deck against Rakdos and Murktide is that Ragavan just kind of goes wild against us and we don't really block it or remove it, really. That's a big part of why I play three uh, Hagramallings instead of Palaka Predation. 
because I want there to be less decent hits for Ragavan against us. I feel like I have to start with a ley line, so if, even though this hand is fantastic, I think I need to mulligan, especially since this is a graveyard win instead of a belcher win. So yeah, let's mulligan, try to get a ley line of sanctity. No ley line. Let's mulligan again. Do I go deeper? The hand, if I keep it, gets disrupted pretty hard by Grief Grief because they can take both my lands. I think I got a mulligan for ley line still. Oh my god. If I mulligan to three, I'm not even realistically keeping the ley line. I don't think. But this is also sort of a mulligan to three already. Fuck it. All right. Pentad Prism, you're staying. Agadim's Awakening, you're staying. And Amiria's Call, you're staying. I'm going to get rid of everything else. Maybe because we had Leyline last time, they will have kept a hand without Thoughtseize effects. But I think that's unlikely. They start with Malakir Meyer. Okay. We're going to lead on Agadim's Awakening since they could possibly hit it with an Inquisition, and we don't want that to happen. We draw Salvage Titan. And they did start with Leyline of the Void in place, so we're fishing for a Belcher now. We would need to draw another land and a Belcher to be able to do that, but we might be able to kill them on turn four if we draw exactly those cards. We draw Creeping Chill. Play Pintad Prism. Pass the turn. Opponent has not played any creatures yet. Which is interesting. Opponent. Thought seizes us. They can take either of these cards. It doesn't really matter at this point. We want to draw exactly Belcher. And then we want to draw an untapped land after that. That's how we win on turn four. Opponent has four cards in hand. We draw Belcher. All right, don't have removal for the Belcher. And let us have a bolt land on top. And we can win. If they don't have the removal the uh, removal for the Belcher for a while, we might just be able to wait for a couple turns, but I don't want to do that if I have the option. Opponent passes. We draw. Talisman. All right. That's next turn. We have to fade removal still. Really interesting and stressful game slash board state right now, I gotta say. We're definitely not doing any graveyard stuff between Void Walker and Leyland of the Void. But it plays a land, they have three cards, they crack polluted delta. They get a blood crypt. Do they have removal for the Belcher? Please do not have removal for the Belcher. They play Fury. That looks like not removal for a Belcher for me. I think we got there. I don't want to get too excited, but... It's our upkeep, and we're activating the shit out of this Belcher. Fuck you. <laughs> Yay. Belcher wins. That's how you get through Dothy Voidwalker. And I'll see you in the next one. All right, final round with Oops. We won the die roll. We have two lands, two rocks, and two ways to win the game. And nothing that we particularly want to get rid of. The Salvage Titan doesn't do much, but it's better than having a Narc Amoeba or a Creeping Chill in the hand. We'd like to draw a land or a Pintad Prism, but otherwise this is pretty good, so let's keep it. Very reasonable seven for us, and our opponent's going down to six. Opponent keeps six. Let's lead on a tap smashing, since it can get inquisitioned possibly, and passing the turn. Let's see what our opponent's on. Opponent plays Blackleaf Cliffs. Is this the third Rakdos deck? Evokes a Fury. Looks like they're just going to play out the Fury. They probably think that we're a Belcher deck, so they're just going to race us. They get rid of Blood Moon put Feign Death. Okay. Interesting. It does look like this is the same Rakdos deck. 
Which is a little unfortunate, but uh, at least we know what to expect. We found a land. Now we're going to give away that we're oops. And we're going to hope that our opponent can't double thought sees us here. Because otherwise we can just win the game most likely. And also please don't Dothu Floydwalker me. I will be sad. They dash Ragavan. Okay. I don't think that the Undying Rakdos decks play Dothy Voidwalker in the main deck. I could be mistaken. I think that's the more fair builds that do that. Alright. Let's just go for it. Shock down to four. Or bolt ourselves down to four, rather. Play Balustrade Spy. Target me. And as long as they don't have surprise interaction somehow, they effectively only have two cards in hand because we know one of the three is Ragavan. Creeping Chill, yes. Looks like everything is going to resolve. Yes, yes, yes. Mark Amoeba, yes. Sword, yes. Sword, yes. Sword, yes. Sword, yes. Or Mark Amoeba, yes, rather. And finally... Sack the swords to play the titan. Get back all the venge vines. Hooray. Hooray for us. So we're going to bring in a set of ley lines. Just like we did last time. Because our opponent's best opener against us is... Double grief on turn one. And we want to turn off as many grief and thought sees and necromentia effects as possible. They'll probably have decent graveyard hate. But, hopefully bringing in Belcher will help us deal with that. Okay, you need to get out of the way. You need to get out of the way. I want four Ley Lines. Cut Jack-O-Lantern, cut Creeping Chill, cut Smashing, cut a Spy, cut a second Smashing. Keeping the Hagra Mauling in case of Voidwalker. So we actually have a way to remove it. We don't have any way to deal with Leyline of the Void other than just winning with Belcher or exiling, exiling our deck with Undercity Informer or Spy and then playing Thassa's Oracle because we drew it. So hopefully this will be enough again. We started off with a quick win, so that's nice. Hmm. I would keep this on a four. Opponents mulliganing a lot. We already have Leyline, and we have a Belcher to win through Graveyard Hate. I'm kind of tempted to just keep this. The downside is if our opponent has a relatively fast clock, we're going to lose. Unless we draw our Mana Rocks and another land relatively quickly. But I think I keep this. Because I think I basically have to mulligan for Leyline. And I think it's pretty likely that they're going to have Graveyard Hate that's going to shut me out if I don't have a Belcher. So let's just ignore these three cards. Pretend that I mulligan to four. Yeah, there's Leyline of the Void. We will also have a Leyline in play. And our, op our opponent had mulligan to five for the Leyline, so we are a bit ahead on that. They don't even have a Ragavan on turn one. That's great. That is great. That is great. All right, we found Talisman of Hierarchy. Let's go... Tap Amiria's Call. That's the turn. We need to draw one more land, and then we can win on turn four with Belcher by casting it on turn three and activating it on turn four again. Pen of Croxes. We will get rid of a Vengevine because we're closer to casting Creeping Chills than Vengevine. And we might need to gain like a Teensy weensy little bit of life or something at some point. We draw Phantasmagorian. Possibly as far away from being a mana source as possible. Let's play Talisman, say go. I would like for them to not blow up my Talisman. And I would like for them to just chill out a little bit while I draw another land for Belcher. They're probably going to play Fable or Blood Moon here, if I had to guess. Fable the Mirror Breaker, okie dokie. They get a Goblin Shaman, one card in our opponent's hand, we draw 
jack-o'-lantern. Not a land. Hmm. However, I think I'm going to go ahead and pop it on Kroxa to get rid of Kroxa and to give me another chance at drawing a land. I do not. I draw a Balustrade Spy, and we will pass. Hmm. All right, come on, land. The reason I went ahead and did it there instead of waiting to do it at instant speed is some of our lands entered tapped, and that would delay us by an another entire turn. Opponent discards Necromentia, so we know they do have that. Now none of our lands entered tapped, so that's kind of nice, actually, since we don't care about our colors now that we have Belcher as our win condition. Opponent hits us for two. They have one card in hand. We draw. Land, please? Ah, oh, fuck. Sword of the Meek. Uh, I'll cast the Sword of the Meek, I guess. Cast the turn. Hopefully I don't get beaten to death before I can just play the Spelcher, because I'm dangerously close to just winning this game here. So it'd be a little bit of a shame to not do so, I think. Opponent gets a Reflection of Kiki Jiki, has two cards in hand, hits us for two. Hopefully they don't play a Fury here. I think that would be the worst possible scenario for us. Either that or them blowing up our Talisman of Hierarchy, probably. Looks like they're casting Fury, though. Uh, unfortunate. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Hmm. I think that just means we're dead. We found a land, finally. Because this can copy Fury. We can't really do anything about that. I can't even smashing enough to kill something. I could play a Balustrade Spy targeting them, technically. That only buys me time. It doesn't really do anything, though. Is there anything I could draw if I do do that? Not realistically. Let's concede. Unfortunate. That smashing came about one turn too late. Let's just run it back. Again, Prismatic Ending could get rid of Leyline of the Void, but it's... Let's be honest, it's not going to. So we just want a similar hand to that, but we want a little bit more mana in it. If we can have exactly our way. And also, we'll be on the play now, so that'll be nice. But I definitely want to start with Leyline of Sanctity again. Alright, we take the play. We have Leyline of Sanctity... We don't have anything else, basically. I'm kind of tempted to keep this just because it has good mana and Leyline of Sanctity and Jack-O-Lantern as a redraw. I think keeping Leyline is better than having a land with a win condition and no Leyline just because of the nature of their deck. So I think I'm going to keep this. It's not exactly the ideal hand. But it's at least got some nice interaction and... Depending on if they actually start with Leyline of the Void in play again, we might be able to win with a Graveyard win con again here. Opponent mulligans to six. I'm hoping they decide to keep a hand based on it having a lot of discard instead of it having a Leyline of the Void. Yeah, they have two Leyline of the Voids. Okay. Let's play Hagra. Pass. All right, so we're looking for a Belcher again. We'll see how much time our opponent gives us. They have five cards in hand after they draw for turn, since they had two Leyland of the Voids. They don't do anything on turn one. We draw. Agadim's Awakening. Let's go Smashing, Bolt Ourselves, and Tad Prism. If we draw a Belcher next turn, we could possibly win on turn four. If not, I'm probably just going to play Jack-O-Lantern. Opponent passes without playing a land. Interesting. Of course, our backup scenario, if we just wind up having a bunch of mana and nothing else, is I could just cast one of these MDFCs if I get enough mana. And I don't think that's impossible right now. Let's play Agadim's Awakening tapped. I'm not getting anything back from my graveyard this game anyway. Play Jack-O-Lantern and pass. One, two, three, four, five. Opponent bolts or shocks themselves with uh, Blood Crypt. 
and a braids pentad prism. Sad. I'm upset at you, opponent. That happens, I guess, though. Let's go ahead and jack o' lantern that away to get a draw. We draw Seagate Restoration. We draw Undercity Informer. Let's play Undercity Informer, I guess. Play a tapped Seagate Restoration. Blue mana is a bit better than white mana for us right now. We're not really on the plan of casting Amiria's Call anymore since we don't have Pentad Prism, and we need three white sources to be able to play it. But I could possibly wind up casting a Thassa's Oracle if I get another blue source and just happen to draw it. Attack for two. I think I might just try to beat my opponent to death this game. Let's play Tap to Miria's Call. Let's play Balustrade Spy, tentatively targeting my opponent with it, unfortunately, because I know they do have Kroxa, but at least they're not close to that mana-wise. We get a Dothi Voidwalker, a Feign Death, and Takanuma in their graveyard. They play a Voidwalker. That's a little spooky. If they kill our Balustrade Spy somehow. Actually... How does this work? I don't know how that works. We drew the Belcher. Do I get to pick the replacement effect on my cards, or do they get to pick because they had these? If they kill my Balustrade Spy or my Undercity Informer... Oh, they're, they're not going to be able to target me anyway. I think I've thought that twice now, uh, this league. I'm a little embarrassed about that. All right, let's play Belcher. We're threatening them with four damage a turn, and we're also threatening them with a Belcher that they have to blow up now. We know they have a Braid. So it's definitely possible. They used one abrade already, though, on a Pentad Prism. But I think it's better to just run out this Belcher here and see if I can steal the game before they get the, oppor the uh, opportunity to. Gotta work as fast as we can while we're still ahead. All right, come on, Belcher. Give it to me. Opponent attacks with Voidwalker. That's promising. We go down to 14. Opponent passes. Hooray! That looks like a 4-1 to me, folks. Belcher being a way to get through Graveyard Hate was extremely good during that league. Also, that was a way more like balanced league with oops all spells than I normally see. Usually it's either very unfavored or very favored with a lot of 2-0s or 0-2s. Let's open up some chests. That one was a little underwhelming, but had decent play points in it. Allosaurus Shepherd. I have no idea if that's worth anything on Modo, but it looks cool. Three more. Getting of the Trials, Necromentia. I will be selling that. I saw that that went up to about seven ticks recently, and I bought mine at probably 50 cents for Pioneer, so uh, I'm going to dump at least some of those, especially if they're showing up in treasure chests. Decent play points from that one. One more. Let's see what we get. Eh, pretty much nothing. Okay. So yeah, oops, all spells. Super fun deck. Uh, if you are a sick, twisted ind individual like I am. Also, pretty much the only deck playing Jack-O-Lantern, so one of the spookiest decks by default, I'd say. Super fun to play. Uh, feels much more like playing like five card draw poker than actually playing magic because of how aggressively you mulligan at the beginning of the game and how other than that, your decisions don't matter all that much. And I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, shoe nice again. Well, basically go subscribe to Tez's YouTube channel. And for those who made it to the end of the video, thank you.